When discussing the history of astronomy, one civilization that is often overlooked are the Maya. Yet these people were absolutely obsessed with astronomy, and from what we can tell were just as advanced and more or less on par with every other culture in the world practicing astronomy at the time. This is the Physics Almanac and the fourth video in this series on the history of astronomy. If you're a returning viewer, it's good to see you again, and if this is your first time here, welcome. Hopefully you'll find something of interest. The Maya were a Mesoamerican civilization, more or less based around the Yucatan Peninsula in modern-day southern Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras. Archaeologically and culturally, their origins date as far back as 2000 BC, but the Maya as a civilization, in the sense of large, powerful, and technologically advanced city-states, begins around 1000 BC. The heyday of the Maya, called the Classical Period, runs from about the 3rd century to the 11th century AD. In the 9th century AD, the Maya go through a major civilization collapse. The cause or causes of this collapse are still debated. The Maya do survive the collapse, and then the final nail in the coffin for this civilization comes with the Spanish conquest during the Age of Exploration. Now unfortunately, as a result of this Spanish conquest, almost all the books written by the Maya were burned by Spanish or Catholic priests. This includes texts regarding astronomy. The priests didn't actually have a problem with Mayan astronomy. The problem was that their astronomy was very closely linked to their religion, and that's what the Catholics objected to, this heretic religion. Unfortunately, as we will see in future videos, this is not the only time in the history of astronomy and science in general that a conquering civilization burns or destroys all of the records of the scientific or astronomical achievements of a civilization they just conquered. This has actually happened a few times, and it's been carried out by a bunch of different civilizations. Unfortunately, this practice seems to be rather common among human beings across the globe. As a result of this destruction of Mayan books, we don't know much about Mayan astronomy. The little we do know comes from the handful of books or manuscripts that managed to survive this book burning. It's not that they survived the burning, it's that somebody, some Spanish person, stashed away one of the books, either because they thought it was interesting, or maybe they were opposed to the book burning, or maybe they thought they could sell it. Whatever their motive was, they stashed away a book and brought it over to Europe. And then hundreds of years later, these books turn up in somebody's attic. Your grandma dies, and you're going through all her stuff, and you come across this book, and you say, what is this? And you bring it to a museum so they can check it out, and lo and behold, they tell you, this is a Mayan codex. The most famous of these codices is the Dresden Codex, found in Dresden, Germany. This is one of the largest, if not the largest, codex that has survived and is filled with astronomical texts. In fact, many of these codices found have astronomical information in them. So what we know about Mayan astronomy is what we can piece together from these handful of codices that managed to survive. Now the Maya don't come out of the blue. They built largely off of a previous civilization called the Olmec, centered around the Isthmus of Tehuantepec in southern Mexico. And one of the things they got from the Olmec was their astronomy. We know this because the Mayan calendar actually traces back to the Olmec. But it's called the Mayan calendar because Europeans discovered it through the Maya. This calendar is a cyclical calendar and has cycles mostly based off of astronomical phenomena. So the Mayans adopt this Olmec calendar, and of course, like any civilization adopting things from their neighbors, they modify it to suit their purposes. We can see it's a pretty complicated calendar, but there's a bunch of cycles, a bunch of circles going around here, each representing a different cycle. Here we have a more simplified version containing only one of the cycles. This is the yearly cycle. So each one of these figures here depicts what we call months. They're not actually months. Months are based on the moon. In this case, these periods are not based off of a lunar period. A lunar period is about 29 days, and these so-called Mayan months consist of 18 20-day periods plus one five-day period, which is called the five days of bad luck. I guess you're not supposed to go out and do things on those five days because something bad might happen to you. If you're enjoying this video so far, please let the YouTube algorithm know and help nudge them in the right direction by liking and subscribing, and maybe sharing it with some friends. The Mayans, like all civilizations that spent time looking at the sky, divide up the sky into a number of constellations. 
One of the ways we know about these constellations comes from the Paris Codex, which contains 13 zodiac constellations. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll remember that the zodiac is the set of constellations in front of which all the planets, the sun and the moon, appear to travel in the sky. In the previous videos, you'll also recall that both in China and the ancient Near East, the zodiac was also divided into 12 or 13 constellations. By the way, we haven't talked about the Indians yet, and they also divide the zodiac into 12 or 13 symbols. So now you might be wondering, how can it be that all over the world, everyone is coincidentally dividing the zodiac into 12 or 13 constellations, 12 or 13 periods? Does this imply all these civilizations were in contact with one another or have some sort of common origin? Well, no. The reason the zodiac is divided into 12 or 13 periods is that there are 12 or 13 lunar periods in one year, and anyone looking at the sky, no matter where they are on Earth, would have noticed this. Now, in the case of the Mayans, these 13 zodiac constellations are not actually what they build their astrology on. They build their astrology off of these 19 so-called months, which are not actually zodiac signs, even though here they're called Mayan zodiac signs. I mean, maybe the two are related and one evolved into the other or they got mixed. I don't know. I'm not particularly interested in the astrology per se. I'm more interested in astronomy. The Mayans, from what we can tell from these codices that survived, made very precise astronomical measurements. Oftentimes, I've heard it pointed out that they were more precise than the Spanish. While that's true, when the Spanish arrived in the Americas, Europeans weren't very good astronomers. In fact, pretty much every civilization that was practicing astronomy at the time were better astronomers than the Europeans. So being better than the Spanish is really no achievement at this time. So how precise were the Mayans? Well, they were more or less as precise as Ptolemy, who we discussed in my video on Greek astronomy. Ptolemy was a very meticulous astronomer. Even if some of his theories about the solar system weren't correct, his measurements were exceptionally good. Typically, they were within a few percent of modern-day measurements. Just to give you a few examples on the precision, one cycle they measured very accurately was the solar period, or the year which they called a tun, or possibly a hab. I believe tun is the word for a year, and hab refers to the calendar based off of the solar cycle. And the Mayans are aware that a year is not exactly 365 days, so they have a way of correcting for this, just like we have a leap year every four years. The way they do it is they tell us that 1,508 tombs equals 1,507 actual solar cycles. So after 1,508 tombs, you're off by one year, meaning they're precise to one part in 1,508. This amounts to knowing the time it takes for one year to go by down to a precision of about two hours. Another period they measured very accurately was the Venus cycle, which is about 584 days. They also knew this period down to roughly two-hour precision. Now, to be clear, the Venus cycle is not the time it takes Venus to go around the Sun. In fact, from what we can tell, the Maya don't have a model of the solar system. So they don't have a geocentric or heliocentric or possibly some other model that explains what's actually going on when they're seeing these planets and the Sun and the Moon move across the fixed stars in the background. Instead, it appears that the Maya were just interested in the actual numbers of each cycle, a sort of numerology. They believe these numbers have something special associated to them. Now, I say it appears this way because, of course, it's possible that in all the books that were destroyed, they may have had a model of the solar system in there. But from the text that survived, there's no mention of this model anywhere, which you would think that would at least come up in one way or another if you were reading an astronomical text. So this 584 period is not the time it takes for Venus to go around the sun. Instead, it refers to the period as viewed from Earth. So sometimes Venus appears in the morning sky and sometimes in the night sky. This cycle refers to when Venus goes from being morning to night and back to morning. It was important for the Maya to know if Venus was a morning star or an evening star for various purposes in their religion. The Maya also track all the other planets, meaning all the planets visible to the naked eye. We have codices explicitly dedicated to the periods of Mercury, Venus, and Mars, but not Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn are mentioned in codices not specifically designated to those planets. Although presumably they probably also had codices dedicated specifically to these planets, they were just destroyed. 
It has also been suggested that the Maya may have known about the procession of the equinoxes. Procession of the equinox refers to the wobbling of the Earth's axis. So the Earth spins on an axis, but this axis doesn't always point in the same direction, meaning it doesn't always point at the same star. Currently, it's pointing at Polaris. But over a period of roughly 26,000 years, this axis wobbles around like a top, so over time this axis points at a different star. The evidence that the Maya may have known about this wobbling comes from the Paris Codex, from what's called the Serpent Dates. So in this codex, there's a series of dates or numbers that refers to a 15,000 year period, but we have no idea what it's referring to. Given that this codex has a bunch of astronomical information in it, the logical thing to do was to try to find an astronomical phenomena that lasts about 15,000 years. However, there aren't any, at least not that we know of. So what is this 15,000 year period referring to? Well, it was suggested that maybe this is referring to the procession of the equinoxes, they just got the number off. After all, 15,000 years is a long period of time, even for a civilization that lasts a few thousand years. You'll recall that the Greeks discovered it by comparing their star charts to much older star charts from probably the Babylonians or the Egyptians. If the Maya did in fact know about this procession, it's likely they discovered it by comparing to much older star charts, maybe from the Olmec. If the Olmec had some errors, accumulated errors over a few thousand years could easily throw this period off by 10,000 years or so. So putting all that together, maybe this 15,000 year period refers to the procession of the equinoxes? I don't know. The evidence is not great, but it's possible. Another way we know the Maya were good astronomers is that they often aligned their buildings with certain celestial objects. For example, we have this building called the Temple of the Seven Dolls, which is aligned perfectly with the sunrise on the equinox. Now, lining things up with the sun, while it does show that measurements of the sky are being made, is not particularly impressive. This practice is found all over the world, dating all the way back to the Ice Age. Furthermore, buildings in general are lined up with the sun, either because you want the building to be lit up by the sun, or maybe you want shade in the house. This doesn't require advanced astronomy. But that's not the only alignments the Maya make. Another thing you find all over Maya territory is zenith wells. I don't know if that's what they're actually called, I'm calling them that. These are wells that, when the sun is at its zenith, will shine vertically into it. And these are more complicated than this picture suggests. Typically, it's not just a well. They often have buildings associated them with tunnels that allow you to travel to the bottom of the well. So these are pretty complex structures. Markers for the zenith, as far as I understand, are much more common than markers for the equinox. That's because the Maya live in the tropics. And only in the tropics will the sun be at some point at the zenith, zenith being straight overhead. If you're on the equator, the day of the zenith is also the equinox. And if you're on one of the tropics, the zenith corresponds to the solstice. If you're between the two, the zenith is sometime between the solstice and the equinox. This is a result of the tilt of the Earth's axis. If you're outside of the tropics, the sun will never reach its zenith. You will never see it vertically overhead. Now, as I mentioned, the Maya also align their buildings with all sorts of other celestial objects. For example, special stars or constellations, or the moon, or the most famous example would be this building called El Caracol, which means the snail in Spanish. This building is actually an observatory specifically designed to observe Venus. And at the top of this observatory, we have carefully placed windows for special days in Venus's cycle. These windows are lined up with the extreme positions of Venus. This definitely shows advanced astronomy. The Sun is easy to figure out. Venus requires much more careful observation. And notice here, this building is pretty late. It was built after the Mayan collapse. So Mayan astronomy still continues after this collapse and then eventually the Spanish conquest ends my astronomy forever. If you enjoyed this video and would like to continue this journey through the history of astronomy, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for the release of future videos. In the next video, we'll continue with astronomy during what I'm loosely calling classical antiquity, and we'll move on to ancient India. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.